Well, today's video could very easily be called failure, failure in the garden. And um, of course, this is a problem that we face in every part of our lives, having to deal with failure, which is nothing more than saying having to deal with uh, <clears throat> the issues of life, because things do not always go the way that we want them to go, and gardening is certainly no exception to that. In fact, the truth is, uh, gardens are not natural systems. They're systems that are highly maintained. And if we want to succeed in them, we've got to be at them daily, uh, really, to succeed well in a garden. Um, there are always things going on, particularly with this diverse a collection of plants as I have here. There's just no way that they're going to maintain themselves. In fact, they're going to have problems. So today we saw lots and lots of problems in the garden. We saw insect damage, we saw fungal damage, we saw basic maintenance, the needing of deadheading things and repotting things, especially if you're growing things in pots. If you're growing orchids, you are constantly repotting and caring for these things. Orchids are not low maintenance. Um, so some of those things were things like repotting the shunnan, uh, <coughs> Cymbidium gringi, and there you could also see problems because those plants, I have neglected those for the last few years and they have not bloomed well for me and that's because they have root issues. Uh, I'm dealing with that now and hopefully I can revive those over the next couple seasons. Um, so, you know, look around me here. Uh, if you look here, this is uh, Boletella brigantes, which is a cross between Boletella acracia Bledostriata, and you would say that this plant is a success. I mean, look at it. It's gigantic. It's full of all kinds of growing like crazy. It's got flowers everywhere. But you know, literally two seasons ago, this plant was in, I won't say dire shape, but it was very unhappy. It just had a handful of growths and a few flowers. That's because I was not repotting it and taking care of it. And last year, I took care of it, and boom, look what we got. Same thing with this guy here. He had a really off year. Because as you can see, this plant, here we go, it's got this yellowing and browning. This is very typical of this uh, type of orchid. This is a Phaeus species, Phaeus flavus. Um, and you'll see the same thing with Calanthe, which is a related genus. Um, so you've got to really keep on these guys. This guy also had an incredible scale problem uh, just a short while ago. And I took care of that, and now it's fine again. Um, in between my legs here, I got this little uh, Cypripedium orchid. This is Cypripedium philip. Um, Cypripedium philip is uh, a cross between Kentucky NC and, uh, hold on. Wait a minute now, what is philip? You know, I'm forgetting Kentucky NC and something else. Pa probably Macranthum. I think it's Macranthum or Macranthos. Uh, anyway, uh, this little plant doesn't even have any, uh, there's no way this thing should even be living in this climate. I live in a climate that's comparable to, say, Atlanta, Georgia, or uh, uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Okay, so this plant barely holds on. Very vigorous in temperate climates, but I have to grow it in this special clay pot with a special medium. If you've seen some of my videos on this, Several years ago, I, was, I did this double pot cooler stuff, and I'm using a special kind of a thing called crypto moss to keep the roots cool. It has to be repotted yearly. You know, the point being, these things don't take care of themselves. Uh, another one, that azalea that you saw maybe two seasons ago, azalea, the uh, rhododendron japonica, um, that was uh, flowering like crazy. And then uh, two years ago, it was doing great. But then last year, it got some kind of a problem in August. And then um, uh, I don't know if there was a fungal thing or if it was uh, heat. We've been having extraordinarily hot and dry summers. Uh, that's a plant of the mountains. It's not native to lowland areas like where I live. So again, a problem. But you look at it again this year, and now it's resprouting and growing great. So if I take care of it this August, it'll probably be fine. So the point is, is that uh, gardening is a, a constant struggle to make things grow and grow well. 
And so whenever you look at a very well-maintained collection, which mine is not, by the way, mine, uh, it goes through cycles, right? Uh, depending upon how much I care for it. Um, you know, really appreciate what that person have done because they have uh, really gone all out and uh, created uh, something special that needs to be maintained constantly. Anyway, uh, just a little bit about this whole lockdown situation. Uh, looks like it's coming to a close here um, uh, on the 21st of May, which is strangely enough a Thursday. Now that's the school system uh, is going to be opening at that time. So I don't know how this is going to be affecting my work, but very likely these videos are going to drop off quite a bit. Um, this particular video was a long one because it's spring and there's a million things going on. And there's a lot more that I wanted to show you, but I just don't have the time uh, because I've been so wrapped up in university. And so what I did is I threw in some of those um, mountain videos walking around here because those are a lot easier to make than uh, showing you what's going on in my garden. Uh, anyway, um, move forward from here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, and uh, let's hope that the whole world can move forward in a, a better direction than the last couple months that we've been in. Uh, fingers crossed on that one. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in the next one.